Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger. And my friends, I guess continuing on with a little bit of a series, we're taking a look at custom variations for characters in Mortal Kombat 11. And today we're looking at Shang Tsung. And to me, what Shang Tsung has to offer now in Mortal Kombat 11 is kind of a very balanced approach that gives him a little bit of a taste of everything he's had before in a much safer overall package. So let's talk about it. All right, so here we are in the variation menu. Uh, we do have an open slot for now. That'll just be kind of user choice. We'll go over that in a little bit. But here's our two main choices and also a lack of a choice, which gives us more options. So we have Shake. Shake is simply put one of the better moves in the game. It's an anti-projectile move, and if you block a projectile with Shake, you get effectively inescapable damage. So it very much controls the matchup where people are terrified to throw out projectiles because you'll shake them. We also have explosive corpses. And now, yes, I know, I'm very aware the damage on that was nerfed, but honestly, very fairly so. You'll still be getting some very respectable damage with it, as we'll go over in the video. And if that wasn't nerfed, it'd be literally absurd, and Shang would have like the best B&B &B combos in the game by a wide margin. So it had to be done. But yeah, so very good. Gives us a combo ability. We get utility and shake. And now what we're not taking. So Shang has a move called Crashing Flames. You won't find it in here because it's a base move. But the thing is, it's replaced by uh, Warlock Ground Eruption and Soul Eater the Ermac Lift, right? Which is what you're going to see in probably, I'd say, a solid 95% of all Shang Tsung variations. It is available in Spellmaster, but Spellmaster is the black sheep of the three traditional variations, <laughs> say the least, right? So by not picking either of those two moves, we have this move now available to us. And boy, oh boy, it's a really, really good move. And with all that said here, we're going to now go into the meat of it. But just one real quick little deal, I guess. I'm going to show you how taking one less ninja actually is way better for you in the end. So here we are with the ninja variation of Shang Tsung. So we got our Ermac. We got our Reptile. We have our Rain. And we have our smoke, right? Awesome. So we get all four of the ninjas, but you have to give up a couple things. You no longer have soul steal, the move is just gone, and you no longer have corpse drop, which is basically his best move, right? But, 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 if you were to change things up just a little bit, and don't pick the three point variation move where it gives you all four ninjas, but pick three of the four ninjas separately. So I still have Ermac, I still have my reptile, and I still have my shake, but we'll just drop Rain, because in my personal opinion, Rain is the weakest of the four transformations. And now all of a sudden, we have our Soul Steel back, and all of a sudden, we have Corpse Drop back. So by giving up Rain, we get two moves back. And considering one of the moves is, once again, in my opinion, his single best move, that's kind of a big deal. So by dropping one ninja, you still get all the ninja fun, right? You can still do all your Ermac combos all your reptile slide crushing blow deals and all the utility of shake but you get back soul steel which granted is not maybe the most useful move but it does have its uses and corpse drop which is just a big blunt hammer that's very usable so just keep that in mind if you want to play around with the ninjas cutting back one thing can give you a lot more options so now to look at the variation we have again here so we have exploding corpse drop which is great for combos we have the Shake, which is, once again, the utilities through the roof. Any given projectile, they just take damage. That simple. And we have Crashing Flames, which, once again, is by not picking two of the most common picks for Shang Tsung. Normally a base move, but by not picking those popular picks, we get access to it because it's not being overwritten by those popular picks. So first up, Exploding Corpse Drop Damage Nerf. Yep, it's only 6% instead of 8% raw. But don't worry, in combos... It's basically 33% mid-screen, and it gets about like 36, 37, depending what you do in the corner. So yeah, the damage is more than fine. Don't worry about the damage. That is respectable by any character's standards. Honestly, even a little bit above average, honestly. Before the nerf, he was getting like 40% mid-screen, which is ridiculous, right? So it couldn't stay that way. So yes, uh, that is basically where you get a lot of your combo damage. Now, versus the ground eruption, the hell sparks, all that kind of stuff, any other normal combo routes, uh, you can combo from everything except for 1-1 one, one and back 3 up 4. 
So three up two, which is one of your main combo starters because has incredible range at 11 frame startup. Uh, two one as well, back one one, all that kind of stuff. Basically everything but the ones I just mentioned, right? So your combo ability is just fine. And if you're looking for like a quick poke, well, then stand two is nine frames versus uh, stand one's eight frames. So in almost every punish situation, it'll still work out just fine, just the same way. Now, the real star here is Crashing Flames. And why Crashing Flames? Well, the thing is here, Ermac by himself, great for combos, sure, but not a lot of utility mid-screen, right? And the Ground Eruption, while it's an amazing move, it's a very character-dependent move. And now uh, let me show you a few examples of what I'm talking about here. The thing is with the Hell Sparks is it's normally meant to be like, you know, a great spacing tool and a combo starter as well. And normally, yeah, it's both those things. But it's full of Swiss cheese. Against a lot of the cast, you cannot safely use this move. Like, uh, let's take a common example. People use this as like a block string, right? It's not a great block string move against a lot of the cast. Anyone who has a move that has a lot of initial forward momentum, they're going to bop you in the head for trying it. And that was a punish. So yeah, that's a lot to eat off. You know, what should be just a basic block string. Because Collector, after the first hit, he can hit four three, and he moves so far so fast, you get out of it. Any kind of bad spacing, well then, hey, you're just opening yourself up to one of these bad boys, right? And even when you think the spacing is good, you're still vulnerable. Like right here, in between this, Liu Kang, I can't do reversal flying kick because it is spaced perfectly, so that's not an option. But here's the problem. That, that says Reversal Punish. The second hit has a uh, flawless blockable gap, and it's honestly pretty easy to uh, flawless block second hit. And then all of a sudden, just about any character with a big forward advancing move, they can still punish it, even if you did the perfect spacing, you did the right thing, right? So once again, it's a very cool move. I, I like it a lot for space control, for combos, all that kind of stuff, but it's just totally full of holes and Crashing Flames is not. So Crashing Flames, if done just from the round one start position, it's only negative 10 with pretty extreme pushback. And the thing is, yes, there's also flawless walkable gap, just like the uh, Hell Sparks. But at that point, as you can see here, there's still a lot of pushback, negative 13, negative whatever. That's not going to get that Liu Kang flying kick punish from this distance, right? So if you space it correctly, it's still completely safe, even with the flawless block. And yeah, it has some decent range considering the startup as well. It controls space very well, considering you're going to be using the usual sweet corpse drop and your basic high projectile here. When they get a little bit closer in, all of a sudden it becomes a very valuable choice because it has a lot of pushback, pushes people far back out, then all of a sudden you can go back for the usual shenanigans. And also, if it actually hits, this thing hits really hard. By itself, it's almost 12%. And if you're willing to burn a bar, it is 17%. That is a lot of damage. Uh, like for comparison here, your base projectile EX is 11. So 11 versus 17, that's a pretty big difference. And when it comes to general pushback, now, yes, this has a few flaws with some characters, absolutely. But uh, if you're doing like 424 or something and just go right into this guy here, negative 13 with the pushback, most of the cast can't deal with that, even with the flaws blockable gap. Most of the cast just cannot process with that, right? So it's just a safe way to push back and chip. And each point almost does like 2% chip each. So it just is a strong utilitarian move that is much safer overall pound for pound than the ground sparks. Yes, that doesn't have some of that utility of ground sparks. We're basically trading utility for safety in this regard. And keep in mind, this is a free base variation move versus ground spark costs you two points. And with that in mind, now thanks to that, we got our shake, we got our exploding combo ability corpses, and we got a whole nother move we still have yet to pick. Also to mention here, while you're doing it in a combo, the Crashing Flames actually has a lot of pushback. As you can see there, it basically puts you all the way full screen. And also gives you quite a bit of head advantage as well, uh, just when they're waking up. And since we have all that head advantage to work with, if we were so inclined to drop that corpse on their head, well, it's actually somewhat difficult to get out of. Um, you can't jump out of it in time, just so you know. Uh, characters with exceptional forward dash movement 
Uh, they can just dash out in time, although once again, it's character to character, uh, or if they have a special move that moves them forward fast enough. But yeah, for a lot of time to save, and of course, you know, we can change the aim to like catch them in that, or just toss a straight projectile and then they'll dash into it. You know, there's just a lot of options, but yeah, it gives you a lot of head advantage to work with. This move, uh, just in combos, in pressure, in neutral, because once again, like, it'll reach further away than anyone's big buttons will reach, right? I do gotta aim it carefully because uh, it is subject to depending on people's toes, basically. If it'll hit their toe hitbox or not. Some people's feet are more slender like Devorah's, but for most of the cast, it'll hit just very easily from that far away. So it's just another avenue for Shang Tsung to control space. And considering, you know, just all the options he already has, uh, with all the movement, you know, it just really helps solidify a game plan. Now we have that final slot here, right? So we have the two moves, but we still had a user choice move. And for my money, well, wait, pick whatever you want, right? But for my money, Reptile Slide's probably the best bet. And obviously, it gives us that extra crushing blow. And it, yes, it does work with our main B&B structure. And then all of a sudden, if you're willing to burn that extra bar, 45% for a mid-screen bread and butter combo, that's pretty intense, right? So Reptile... If you want to pick that as an extra move, it's just effectively another blunt hammer in the arsenal. And one I think is just a little Q, right? I'm not going to accuse this of being the best move, but the Inferno. So the Inferno is a big old flame pillar, and yes, you can aim it. You can choose what direction you want it. So it can be closer to you, it can be closer to the foe, whatever works out for you. Uh, the far version will always go behind the enemy no matter where you are. And the closer version will always just kind of be in front of you no matter where you are. And whichever version you pick to enhance it, we'll put it towards the enemy. And then it'll travel across the screen. Now, the one big thing about this move is it's slow, right? It takes some time to get going. So it's not something you want to do willy-nilly, especially if you're closer in the enemy's face. But one of the interesting things about this here, besides the fact it just controls space really well, because this is just one giant moving hitbox, right? And it's uh, fairly difficult to jump over as well. So you kind of got to deal with it is if it connects, it creates a combo okay state. So the thing is here, basically if it connects, you're liable to get a fair chunk of damage because you can easily just hit confirm it. Like it is not difficult to see it connect, right? You have a fair amount of time after it hits to go for it. And you know, if it's blocked then whatever, cause you can move around, you are super plus in their face. So it's a slower setup move, but considering it's just an active threat on the screen for a decent amount of time, either if you want to put it behind him or in front of you, eh, maybe it's worth a look. So with all that said, I think that's maybe an idea of what you might want to look at for Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. Now, of course here, the classic variations, if you want to go Hell Sparks, if you want to go full on Ninja, I'm not saying don't pick those. I still think they're completely valid and valuable. But if you're looking for an alternate take on the classic formula, I think this gives Shang a lot of what he needs in terms of screen control, in terms of just being annoying to the enemy, and combo damage. It gives him some of the best damage he gets thanks to exploding corpses. Then this might be a variation worth looking at. And all that said, my friends, I guess I'm rambling too much now, so I'll close out the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video's found you well. Go out and play some Mortal Kombat.